everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and geez, it's been about three weeks or so since I last sat down with you. If you're a returning viewer, welcome. Thanks for being patient with me. Um, and if you're a new viewer, if you're here because of the knitting content, hello, knitter. If you're here from Floss Tube, hello, Cross Stitchers. Um, this is my podcast where I usually talk about yarn and knitting and other crafty things, but lately it's been a lot of cross stitch. I've fallen in the rabbit hole and I'm not sad about it. So I definitely have, let me check my notes. I definitely have a FFO, a finely finished object to share with you. I have a couple works in progress, a couple stitchy works in progress, as well as knitting and just a little bit of haul. I have some dream stitching and dream knitting that I'm really hoping to cast on and start soon, so I'll talk about those, as well as just a few other shout outs of people I've been watching recently and some other just life in general chat. So if you're into that kind of thing, then definitely grab a drink, grab a coffee, grab a alcoholic beverage, um, whatever tickles your pickle, uh, grab it and let's get started. So I did uh, keep some notes because I found that actually keeping notes keeps me really, one, motivated to work on things and two, organized so I don't have to sit around and wonder for about two hours leading up to podcasting what the heck I've worked on since we last talked. So this has been fantastic. So I do apologize if I'm looking down. I have my notebook here with all of my notes in it. I uh, just want to get that out of the way. And at the top of the episode, I do want to mention a huge thank you to all of you that had entered in for the giveaway from the last episode. I was giving away a skein of Teeny Button Yarn, and I will say that I loved reading through all of your comments and entries into that giveaway, and I will definitely share the winner with you during this episode. So if you commented on last, I was going to say last week's, um, if you commented on the last episode at the beginning of March, then definitely stick around to see if you won that skein. If I did draw your name, then I'll need you to email me ASAP with your shipping address so I can get that out in the mail to you sooner rather than later. But again, I will circle back to that here in just a little while. Um, I wanted to share a finely finished object. Um, FFO is a relatively new term for me. Um, as I am new to the cross stitch world, but FFO means finely finished object. So knitters have FOs, finished objects, usually when things are taken off the needles. Um, an FFO is when it's like done, done, done to completion. You finished it off how you wanted. Um, I suppose like a sweater could be an FFO if you've blocked it, woven in all the ends, did all the things, and now it's ready to wear. Technically, I guess that's an FFO. Uh, but in the cross stitch world, that means that it's either framed or it's finished however you intended it to be for the rest of its life. Um, so I do have one that I want to share, and that is my collector's heart. And this was a pattern, I shared it last week, or I'm going to keep saying that, you guys, last episode. <laughs> uh, I shared it last episode and I had just finished the stitching on it, but now I've finally finished it to its completion, um, which is just in time for my anniversary, which is tomorrow. Uh, you guys are likely seeing this on Wednesday, so it is uh, my anniversary is on Wednesday the 24th. My husband and I will have been married for nine years, um, but together for, oh my gosh. 20. Um, so yeah, we, it's, we're old hat at this point. <laughs> um, we've been together a very long time. Uh, but I wanted to make him something fun for our anniversary. And so I found this, uh, chart that is, um, oh my goodness, a heart in hand and it's the collector's heart. I go into this in much more detail in my last episode, so if you're curious about any of those details, please go run over and check that out. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this other than to say I did finish it with a bit of sticky mounting board uh, that I cut to size, and 
I want to say it's a six by six square, um, which silly me, I guess I didn't realize when I was searching for frames that a six by six frame is not readily available. And I was not going to custom order a frame in order to have it done in a couple days. Um, a five by five is definitely an option. Um, an eight by eight, also definitely an option. A four by four, an option. Six by six, can't find them anywhere. So I had thought about, I did pick up an eight by eight frame and I thought about doing a custom mat, but really like that was just so beyond my skill at this point. Uh, so I was kind of wandering around Michael's as one does and I found this, um, it's just a piece of like a wooden pallet thing that you can either like mount things on or paint or whatever it's over in their woodworking stuff um and I just used like the super duper heavy duty glue epoxy glue and glued on the sticky board uh that has the finished the finished stitching on it so I really like it on the underside if anyone were to ever peel this off or uh, maybe after a while it comes off, whatever. I did write a little message on the back, happy anniversary, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I put my initials in the date of when I finished, which, yes, you'd have to take the thing apart to see that. Um, so I may end up putting something on the back here before I gift it to him. But I do want to mention that this was the 2017 heart and hand chart. I changed the date on it to 2012, which is our anniversary year, the year we got married in. Um, so if you're seeing that and you're confused, that is why this is the 2017 collector's heart. Um, I just liked the quote and uh, the design, so I ended up changing the date on there to match our anniversary. Otherwise, everything else is completely called for. It's all DMC. Um, I bought the kit from Fat Quarter Shop, I believe, which came with the linen. So yeah, really all I had to get was the DMC um, and I picked that up at Michael's. And I'm really happy with it. I think it's cute. I think it looks rustic. I hope that he will enjoy it. Like I mentioned uh, last time, I'm like, this is much more of a sentimental gift. I don't know how excited he'll be about that. Um, but it's a nice little keepsake to keep hang on the wall or put up in his office or whatever, wherever he wants to display it. And it'll be something nice to keep throughout the years. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. I might still go back and find a custom frame at some point. We'll see how long this uh, withstands the test of time and see how well that glue holds up. But for now, it's done and I'm going to wrap it up and gift it to him tomorrow evening at dinner. I do not have any finished objects in terms of knitting, but I do have a new start, so I'm going to hop into that. I'm going to jump around just a bit. I have much more cross stitch this time than I do knitting, so let's just talk knitting for a bit. Um, if you guys are familiar with the uh, Crazy Sock Ladies podcast, The Wonderful K, um, she has been knitting I know it's not pronounced Musselberg, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Uh, Musselberg hats. And she has like literally been a Musselberg machine, just cranking them out like crazy. Um, I finally, I caught the bug. I had to cast on. I had to do one. Um, and I do not regret it at all. Um, so I probably last week, week and a half ago, sat down and cast on for a Musselberg hat. And here is my progress so far. I will say I put it down for just a little while, um, but when I was working on it, it was working up super quickly. Um, so you can see here, I cast on using the disappearing loop cast on, and I started with DPNs. So you do cast on just a few, and then you increase in the round. And then finally, I'm, I had a DPN fiasco uh, that I won't get into. Let's just say about the longest DPNs on the face of the planet. And so this cast on was very fiddly. And yes, by the time I get to the part where you decrease back down and I have to switch back to DPNs, I will likely either magic loop it or find some new DPNs because that was 
slightly torturous. Um, it was great once you got more on the needles because you didn't have to worry about them slipping off, but this part was pretty, pretty rough going. Um, but luckily finished my increases and was able to toss it on a circular needle. Uh, so now it is literally just stockinette in the round and I am loving it. So the first day I did my cast-ons, I did my increases, and I believe this was the next time I picked it up, I put a marker in and then worked this much, probably watching Harry Potter, to be honest. Um, so made a couple good inches worth of progress there. The next day, marked again, picked it back up, knit some while watching TV and doing whatever, um, and then marked the last time I picked it up and made another couple inch and a half, two inches of progress. So this is working up really quickly. Um, this hat is kind of interesting in its construction because instead of starting a ribbing as you would expect, you actually double its length. So I am going to continue this until the specific amount of inches that I don't remember. Um, and then you start decreasing again. So I will essentially work this end all over again over here and then once you have that complete you fold it in on itself so it will be a double thick hat um, and then that way it's completely reversible there is no wrong side inside outside whatever um, so yeah it's kind of neat and it looked super cozy the ones that I've seen of people that have finished theirs um, and so I have Lord knows I have enough random skeins of sock yarn that I thought, what better way than to just grab one that I've been loving for a very long time, it's been languishing in my stash, and uh, cast on one of these hats. And I can definitely see many more of these in my future, especially if it fits and if it's cozy. Um, I could see making everyone in my family one, that's kind of what Kay is doing. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been great, stocking it in the round, super mindless, I can pick it up, I can set it down, whatever, don't have to think too much about it, um, I'm really enjoying it. And this yarn is gorgeous, it is Hawari Bazaar yarn, um, and it is, oh goodness, I'm going to forget the numbers, it's basically... <laughs> It's Pluto, the planet, um, but what they've renamed it in numbers. So I will put it on the screen, of course, and down in the description box. Um, but I just think it's knitting up beautifully, and it would make a fabulous sweater. Like, can you even imagine that as a sweater? That might need to happen. It might need to happen. We'll see. But that's so pretty. And I love blues and purples, and so someday when this is on my head. I think it will look really nice. Um, you can also make this extra long so not only is it folded over on itself to be double thick but then you can make it so it has a fold up brim so then it's like uh, four times the thickness around your ears to be extra warm or of course you can wear it slouchy if you don't want the folded brim as well. I imagine I will have this done relatively soon. Um, I've got a Hamilton stitch marker on there. I don't know if it's gonna want to focus. There we go. So history has its eyes on you and this is from a needle runs through it. And I've got a whole set of Hamilton stitch markers because you have to have Hamilton stitch markers if you're part of the Hamil fam. It's just it's a thing. So here is the rest of that cake. Look how gorgeous that is. Um, I want to say that you use up quite a bit of a full skein of sock yarn. So if you're going to knit one of these, make sure that you have a full 100 grams. You could probably, if you don't want to make it double thick and you just want to add ribbing to the brim, uh, you could probably get away with a half skein. But if you're following pattern, definitely look for a full skein of sock yarn. Uh, and the beauty about that pattern is, <clears throat> excuse me, the beauty about that pattern is you can make it in any yarn weight you want. So the pattern is fantastically written out. You base it off of your gauge. 
So even if you want to make it in a DK, you'll just knit enough, increase, uh, make your increases, knit enough to where you can kind of check your gauge so you don't have to gauge swatch ahead of time. And then based on your gauge, that is how many you continue to increase and then how long you make it. So you can make it out of DK, you can make it out of sport, you can whatever, whatever, light fingering, heavy fingering, whatever the heck you want. Um, just start knitting it, check your gauge when you get, you know, a good inch or so to measure. Um, and then you're off to the races. So I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I see much more in my future. Uh, and again, links will all be down below for the pattern, the maker, uh, the yarn, all that good stuff. That's really all I've been working on knitting wise. Uh, I do still have a sock on the go that I pick up every now and again, but honestly, my heart has been completely consumed by cross stitch. Um, and I'm really excited to share just how much progress I've made on some of these things. So the first one I will share is my Hello Pumpkin. Uh, this is a chart by Caterpillar Cross Stitch and she is UK based. She has a, um, whoops. She has a tree design or tree motif, a tree chart uh, for every, every season. So there is a fall, winter, spring, summer. Uh, spring just released, that is Hello Petal, that is on uh, the website. Um, I have not purchased that one just yet. I am going to make that a gift purchase to myself once I complete Hello Pumpkin. So of course, me being the lover of fall that I am, that is my favorite season by far. Uh, my birthday's in fall, I love the weather being in the Midwest, it's just oh, campfires and hoodies and s'mores and boots and just crunchy leaves. I love everything about fall. So of course I had to start with Hello Pumpkin. Um, I also have Hello Deer, which is the winter version, uh, which I will likely start. I don't know if I'll do that one next or if I'll bounce around, but I made such good progress on Hello Pumpkin. Um, I'm not going to take it out of the Q-Snap frame because A, it's a pain in the butt. B, you can see everything that you need to see. Nothing's hidden uh, or covered up, but I ended up buying the full kit. So it comes on, or it comes with 14 count Ada and all of the DMC floss that you need <clears throat> and the chart, of course. And then I added a needle minder to my order so that owl matches the owl here. Um, there is also a needle minder for Hello Deer as well as Hello Petal that are super cute. Um, I just ended up getting the owl this time around. Um, so he's hanging out on there, holding on to my needle, and I'm wrapping my parked threads uh, around it. So yeah, I don't remember how much I had done the last time you saw it, but I definitely got a good start in on the tree trunk here. I'm filling in a lot of the leaves and floral things around the owl. Finished him off, almost got the fox done, just need to finish off his ears up there. Um, this is the beginning of an apple, and I've got a mushroom here. So I'm just kind of working where I can while it's in this frame. Um, so there is quite a bit more to go in here, and then up here there will be quite a bit more. Um, and it will eventually make like a very large tree. And then down below there will be the rest of the trunk and then some grass with some stuff down at the bottom. So still quite a bit to go on this, but I have made fabulous progress and I am so happy with it. I love these colors so much, so much. Um, I really want to dye some yarn based on some of these colors. Um, but maybe once it gets closer to fall, we'll see, we'll see. The frame is actually not a Q-snap frame for those interested. I grabbed it off Amazon because Q-snaps everywhere I could find were sold out. So this is just an eight by eight frame Amazon brand. I don't remember, I'll link to it down below if I remember. Uh, but yeah, I was, like I said, I'm brand new. So I'm playing around with different frames, um, hoops, 
stitching in hand I've tried but I'm not a super fan of it's still kind of fiddly for me but um, I don't know so far I really like the Q-snap if I can figure out how to manage the excess uh, cloth which I seem to have worked it out pretty well here but you know I'm gonna have to move it again soon so <laughs> wish me luck um, but yeah, I've got all the flosses on this little floss card that is literally a mess right now. Um, but this is how it comes if you get a kit. It does not look this scraggly, I promise. It looked very nice when I when it arrived to me. Uh, but and I just went through and drew the symbols uh, next to the numbers on the floss card. So I could quickly look at the chart and then see which one was which. Um, because I, you know, I probably won't reuse this. I've already ripped it in a couple places and it's been a whole thing. Um, there's the bottom of the chart or the bottom of the image. You can see a little bit. So, you know, there's some pumpkins and stuff down at the bottom in the grass that I will need to get to. But this bag I wanted to mention, I also grabbed these off Amazon. I've seen a lot of floss tubers using these bags. Um, they are paper sized, so this is a full sheet of, you know, printed printer paper. Um, and yeah, they're, I like them. They're really sturdy and they just zip close at the top. I think I got like a 12 pack on Amazon. And so far they've been really great to keep my projects in because I can see through them. Um, so I know exactly what I'm grabbing and it does look like it is mesh, but the mesh is completely closed off. So you can kind of see that reflection there. Um, so those are not holes. It is, it is closed, but the mesh just gives it a little bit of extra durability. I like them. I do have a project bag for cross stitch, but, um, to be honest, I find that I'm just gravitating towards these bags so much more um I don't know they're a really great cheaper option if if you're into that the next work in progress that I have uh is cross stitching shocker um and I actually just wrapped up so this is kind of an fo technically um, I just wrapped up the second block on this last night. So this is the Animal Almanac by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I have been following the Frosted Pumpkins forever on Instagram, even before I thought I would want to cross stitch because I love their aesthetic, I love their designs. They're just so cute that I just enjoyed watching just to see what they would come up with. And I told myself that if I ever decided to start cross stitching I was absolutely going to jump in full board um, with, with the frosted pumpkins so of course I started with a giant stitch along that they held I believe last year so this is the animal almanac there are going to be 12 of these little uh, motifs so I finished the first one so you can see there's a one on there because I believe it's supposed to coincide with the months of the year so um, it will be two across six down um, so it'll be a, a taller piece um, but I had finished the little penguin here Aurora the penguin for January sounds like my cat's coming in to say hello oh she just jumped up in my lap I don't know if you'll be able to see her Say hi, Jazz. You want it in here, so now you got it. <laughs> this is, oh my goodness. She just wants snuggles, and every time she hears me talking, whether it be podcasting or on a Zoom call, she thinks she has to be right in the middle of all of it. But I am, I am busy. Can you say hello and then go lay down somewhere? Hmm, thank you. You're gonna sit in my lap and be a good girl? Claws. <laughs> okay, sit in my lap. Oof. Okay, 
<sighs> cat hair everywhere. Uh, so yes, I have finished Aurora the Penguin, which was January's little block um, a while back, and then got started on the second block, which is Rennie the Fox. And he is so cute with his little uh, hairnet and his bubble bath. So cute. I actually ended up having to fudge a little bit of Rennie because somewhere while I was working in the bathtub, I got one count or one stitch off. So this part is actually a little bit closer than it should be. And so I kind of had to uh, fake it once I got over here so it, everything would continue to line up. So there's actually an extra column in there of stitches, but I made it work. Um, another thing I did was not fill in these stamps here. Uh, the stamps are supposed to have some color around the heart in the middle. I decided to leave that out because I like the negative space. But otherwise, everything else is absolutely um, to chart and called for. The needle minder that I've got on here is also from A Needle Runs Through It. Um, and I love it. It's a cute little bee and a... Um, yeah, and it's just, it's pretty thick wood, and it's got a magnet on the back, so that's how that works. Um, this is going to be put away for a while, because actually starting Thursday, uh, they are kicking off their next stitch along. Um, and that one I did decide to join, so that is the Cozy Cafe. Stitch Along. I believe I chatted about that on the last episode because I've got my full kit in. Um, but they were having some trouble with the post and people getting all of their kits. Um, and that was supposed to start early in March, but they decided to postpone it until March 25th just to make sure that everyone's kits arrived. Um, so no one was missing out, which I thought was super nice of them to consider. Um, and yeah, I ended up you know, having plenty to work on in the time being. So Animal Almanac will go into hibernation for just a little bit, um, but I absolutely adore these cute little faces. So I've got a frog coming up, I think, and I can't remember what the other one is. So cute. Um, again, this was last year's Stitch Along, so there are so many out there on the interwebs finished if you want to go see what that looks like all completed. Um, it came with, the kit came with all of the DMC, so I've just got it on a little thread card here, or thread cards, on a binder ring. And I am using a hoop for this one, uh, but will likely end up moving it over to a Q-snap as I acquire more Q-snaps, because I love them. I think really that's all that I have in terms of what I've been working on. I feel like I should have a lot more these last three weeks, but um, I did get a ton of cross-stitch done. Um, I also got a lot of progress on that hat done. And the weather's been warming up, so we've been spending more time outdoors, being active, um, doing things as a family, and less time kind of hibernating on the couch, being crafty. Um, family life is starting to pick up quite a bit. Uh, the kids are finally back in school full time. Uh, my son was remote half the time. Um, he has finally gone back full time and they are starting to slowly bring back clubs and sports and things like that. So life is getting busy as spring arrives um, and it's only going to get busier as we head into the summer, but I am totally on board, so ready for warm weather and sunshine. I moved the camera a little bit because Jazzy has decided to sit right here <laughs> on my workstation and so I thought you guys might get a kick out of watching her plot uh, whatever it is she's plotting over there. Actually, it looks like it might be bath time, so that's fantastic. I apologize in advance. Um, otherwise, she might just sit there and, and hang out and 
kind of watch what's going on. We'll see. Let's see if I can get it to focus on her a little bit. What are you doing, cutie? Plotting how to take over the world, are you? Uh, okay, so I did get a little bit of haul. I did get some knitting haul, but it was just a purchase. I won't receive it. Receive it. I won't receive it for quite a while because it's an advent calendar. <laughs> Surprise! I already bought my first advent calendar for the year. Um, Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns listed hers. I believe earlier in the month and of course I've gotten hers for the past two years I couldn't break the cycle so I went ahead and purchased uh, her advent for 2021 so first advent in the books it's happening it's ordered it'll be here um, Julie dies the most wonderful colorways and I've so enjoyed her advent calendar every year um, so I knew that as soon as she was putting those up I was getting one um, so unfortunately I don't have anything to show you for that, but uh, it was a purchase, it was a, some haul. It'll just come to fruition much later, closer to November. Um, however, <laughs> my cross stitch haul has kind of imploded a bit. So... I will take them out of the packages um, and edit it out so you don't have to listen to the crinkles. Um, but I did make a purchase from Hand Dyed by Rolanda and she is a fabric dyer and a floss dyer on Etsy and I saw that she had I saw that she had an update and I just I, I had to join. I had to grab some things so I will show you. Um, and it's my first opalescent fabrics. So this is a Lugana and it's uh, an opal, like I said, opalescent Lugana. So there is sparkle in there. I don't know how well it'll come across. I can see it a little bit. But again, she got me with the blues and purples. I'm a sucker for blues and purples. So I saw this. I loved it. I had to grab it. Don't have any idea what I'll make on it. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful nonetheless. So that is the first and I am still learning about fabrics, so it's taken me quite a while and for some reason I just haven't been able to find like a good resource for explanation on fabric types but I think I've got it now so a Lugana if you hear Lugana or uh, a Monaco or a Jobelin I think I'm pronouncing that correctly those are all even weave fabrics uh, they are usually a cotton mix and the, it's called an even weave because you're never gonna be able to see that but um, unlike Ada that has very obvious spaced out holes, um, you will end up stitching over the strands that are here in the fabric. Uh, and the even weave just means that the strands are evenly placed and not, some are on normal linen, uh, some are thick and some are thin, and I definitely have noticed that on my animal alm neck. Um, I think you're gonna be able to see that at all maybe a little um, but yeah the even weave is all evenly placed and even evenly woven imagine that even weave um, yes if it is a Belfast linen I believe that means it is a 32 count if it is a cashel linen, I believe that means it's a 28 count fabric. Please feel free to correct me if I am wrong, but I think I've finally gotten there <laughs> in my brain. The other one I purchased is another Opal Lugana, and I've been playing around with trying to find something very specific for a project, and so I saw this thinking that it might work for that. Um, just a really pretty pink. 
I love the modeling and the different tones in there. And again, it's got that opal, opal sparkle in there. It's really pretty. She has really fabulous fabrics. Um, yeah, I haven't seen a fabric from her that I didn't like. So same, same thing, same count. Uh, but pink. She's got a purpley blue and a pink. Um, I am quickly becoming a person that just buys pretty fabric. I did have sort of an intention with that, um, but I've also noticed that I'm just buying fabrics that I think are pretty at this point. Like I would buy uh, skeins of sock yarn because they're pretty with zero idea of what to do with them. I just want to collect them because they're pretty. It's a whole thing. I know, Jazzy's yelling at me. Uh, going along with that, last time I did mention that I picked up some Monaco, some white Monaco. Um, to dye myself and I did I wanted to share this I did dye a larger bit of fabric um, for myself so I did this with some RIT dyes and some of my fiber reactive dyes uh, because I am a yarn dyer so I do have a lot of the powdered dyes that I use for dyeing yarn some of which of those you can use on cotton fabrics and plant fabrics the others uh, are very specific to animal fibers. I have some that works for both. Um, she's taking off with some floss. No thank you. No. Uh, so yeah, anyway, like I was saying, so the base was dyed with RIT, and then I mixed up some of the fiber reactive dye that I had uh, to put on top, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, again, just a complete, complete experimentation. I do quite like this modeling here, um, and I think, I think that this is going to be my fabric that I will use to stitch up Sakura, which is something that I talked about last time. It is a pattern or a chart by uh, Autumn Lane Stitchery, and it is a beautiful geisha and lots of uh, cherry blossom motifs and just, it, it, the sample was stitched up on a very, very pretty kind of mauve pink uh, or mauve pink. So that's kind of what I was going for. Um, I could have just went ahead and ordered what it was stitched up on, but I wanted to just play around and see what I could come up with. Um, and I'm really happy with it. Uh, and I did also get my order in for all of the floss and beads for that project. So it is all here, it's all ready to go. I've just got to kit it up and of course, I keep hearing this thing called floss toss, which is where you hold all the floss up next to the fabric to make sure, whoops, that's counterproductive, uh, to make sure all the colors are gonna look nice on there. Um, I have not quite yet got to that point where I've laid it all out and looked really in depth, but I think I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's gonna work well. It's going to take a huge piece of fabric. It is a very large piece. Um, and so I am also considering gritting for the first time, which I've never done. Um, and then it came with these, well, it didn't come with, it calls for these treasure braids. So again, something brand new. I'm really excited to play with. And lots of beading, lots of Mill Hill beads. So, just got what's called for. I think I'm missing maybe some floss somewhere that was out. Uh, but I think I've got all the beads I need, as well as the treasure braid. Oops, here's kind of the, uh, 
don't know if those will focus. We've got a couple, couple bigger beads uh, that'll be kind of a, like a focus. I ended up grabbing all of those from 123 Stitch, which is quickly becoming my uh, supplier of choice anytime I need something. Um, I think I order from them once a week now. <laughs> um, I do quite like going into Michael's and hand picking the floss. Um, I also have quite a bit that was that I inherited uh, from a kind of a, a family member, kind of a distant family member, sort of. Um, so of course I looked through all of that first while I was picking floss. Um, and uh, I did grab some new charts from 123 Stitch. Kind of jumping, well, let me do this. I'll show you the other thing that I received in the mail um, and then we'll talk about the last thing I received as well as getting into the dream stitching. So I recently got to go back to the office and work in office. Um, it has been over a year since I had the ability to do that. Um, but I realized quickly that I needed a backpack to haul all of my stuff in, um, including my laptop, headphones, purse, um, all of that good stuff. So I started looking around online for backpacks and I actually came across the maker's backpack. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the maker's backpack. Um, and I found the Della Q's, which used to be um, Uh, namaste. I think they used to be namaste bags. I remember seeing their booth back in Vogue Knitting Live uh, in New York and my friend Christy actually got one of their maker bags that is more like a duffel bag. Not a duffel bag but an over-the-shoulder bag that houses lots of compartments and things for all your makings um, as well as just being kind of a, a day bag. Really it could be a purse, whatever you want to use it for. So I actually originally hunted for them, but they have since changed their name. But I couldn't find that same bag that Christy had purchased, but I did see that they now make backpacks. Um, this is a woman owned and operated company and now they're being, I think, I want to say they're being sold specifically for Jimmy Bean's wool, um, but I actually found mine through another local yarn shop and ordered it online to have it shipped because Jimmy Bean's did not have the color that I wanted. Um, so I was able to find the color I wanted um, and then have it shipped from this local yarn shop. And I guess I'll just show you. I was gonna see if there was anything on here that I needed to talk about, um, but their new website is delacue.com. Um, and I got a maker's backpack and I got the red. So the red is the color that I really wanted. Um, it is all waxed canvas and leather and super nice. So the back has a zipper pocket here um, for tablet, phone, whatever. Uh, these Handles up here can come off if you don't want them, if you want more of a backpack look. Um, what else? Standard backpack straps. They all still have the, the Namaste logo. It's the little lotus flower on here. Um, but the label does say Delicue. And on the inside, oh my goodness, this is so awkward to show. There is a giant pocket for a laptop with a strap to secure it. Another pocket here. Um, another label with a thread or yarn cutter right here. 
I don't know, it's probably not going to come across very well. I might try to get some better footage um, that I'll insert over this of the inside. But lots of pockets. And then on the front side, you've got a yarn minder here that you can loop your yarn through. As well as, oh my goodness, yeah, I'll insert some other footage. Uh, but it's got pockets for random things and pens and notebooks as well as water bottle pockets on the inside. It's huge. And then on the outside, it's got another water bottle pocket here. Um, another one here. And then it's got this really cute stitch marker holder. Or whatever you want it to be um, that is removable. Uh, let's see, it's super well made. It worked exactly for my purpose and what I wanted. Um, like I said, I just needed something to toss all my stuff in to get to and from the office. The bottom has little feet, so it doesn't sit fully on the ground. Yeah, I love it. It's a great size. It holds my 17 inch MacBook Pro that I have for work. Um, plus some. So there's plenty of room. I stuck my purse in here. I was able to get, um, well, I tested if I could get a project in here, which I can. I did not take it to work the first day. Um, but if I wanted, I could. They also included a tapestry needle. And a cute little notebook. That is gridded, dot gridded, to take along. I really like it. Um, like I said, I cannot remember for sure uh, the shop, the shop that I got it from, but I just googled Delic Maker Backpack Red and found it. Um, but yeah, otherwise they do have like a, an olive green, a yellow, and a blue, I believe, um, that are all very pretty. But I knew I wanted the red one. Um, so yeah, so I got that. And then I got some charts from 123 Stitch that just came in the mail. I'll hold these up briefly, but then I'll insert better photos. I was watching a another floss tube can't remember which if I remember I'll put her on the screen um, but she is making the country cottage needlework monthly samplers and she had just completed I think she just completed January and was gonna start February so I went ahead and got January February March and April and yeah they're just their sampler of the month so they're going to have one for every month of the year. I thought this would be a really fun monthly project to start um, and hold, you know, I wouldn't hold myself too terribly to the fire if I didn't keep up. Um, let me see how big they are. So it is a 45 by 125 stitch. So the finished size is going to be approximately two and three quarter inches by seven and three quarter inches. So about three by eight. So that's really not bad. Um, and that is if you are stitching it on a 32 count linen, uh, which I do intend to do. I have a bunch of the uh, Country Mocha Belfast. Uh, so I think I will do them all on there. So that was another haul that I got and that definitely goes into my dream stitching. Um, I have a lot of things that I want to start including these. Um, I want to start Sakura by Autumn Lane Stitchery and of course later this week I will be starting the Cozy Cafe Stitch Along uh, from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. 
I have I have a lot of a lot of things I can definitely see now how easy it is to start all of the things and have a ton of cross stitch on the go um, I told myself I wasn't gonna be like that I was gonna be monogamous and here we are oops <laughs> um, but I love it I am so enjoying it um, I also ended up getting floss. I went to Michael's and picked floss for my lovely gnomes, which is an autumn lane stitchery chart that I believe I had in haul last time. Uh, I also grabbed floss for Nomi, which is another one from them. Um, so I have the floss to start those, which I'm not sure how quickly I'll get them started, but um, I at least have the floss pulled and ready for those. I am having a heck of a time today with my camera and the batteries. I feel like I did this last time too, so maybe I'm just really out of practice, um, but I wanted to quickly jump on to close out the podcast as well as um, announce the winner of the skein of yarn. Um, so let's do that now. I asked you guys to leave a comment down below last episode um, using the word wishes to win the skein of Teeny Button Studios soft sock in the best wishes warmest regards Schitt's Creek colorway uh, and I pulled a random comment using a generator and the lucky person is Kathy Keeley. Um, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong, but congratulations, Kathy. If you would just shoot me over an email at hello at loftyloops.com uh, with your shipping address, I will get this in the mail to you as soon as uh, I receive that email. Um, so congratulations. Thank you all to everyone that participated. Um, I am definitely going to be holding more giveaways on the podcast here because it's just too much fun to not. Um, so Kathy, again, congratulations. I'll get the skein over to you as quickly as possible. Please make sure to shoot me that email. I'll have a link to my email address down below uh, for ease. Um, and if I don't hear from you by the next time I record, I will have to draw a new winner. But I'm sure, Kathy, you are going to want this. So please reach out. I'll be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, just want to close out the episode um, and say thanks for watching. Uh, a little bit of shop news real quick. Going to drop it in here at the end. Uh, the Throne of Glass yarn clubs are open. They will remain open until April 1st. So actually the last day of March uh, is when they will close. So if you want to get in on that, make sure to head over and get those soon. There's only a few more days left. Uh, maybe about a week left until those will close. That is a three month club. Uh, however, there will also be monthly options available if you want to get in on a monthly basis. So head on over to the shop to check that out. Another huge announcement that I'm so excited for is on April 1st, I will be opening up round one for the Lofty Loops 2021 advent calendar. This year I'm going to be offering two options. One is a 24-day advent, technically 25, uh, so you would get 24 mini skeins with a full skein on the 25th day. I am also going to have a 12-day advent where you get 12 mini skeins plus a full-size skein um, because I know that advents can be quite an investment. Um, they, they're definitely not cheap. Uh, they take a ton of work to put together and so therefore um, the price, especially for how many little mini skeins you're getting and things like that, um, I know that, like I said, they're definitely an investment and not everyone is, um, is able to get those, but I wanted to make it a little bit more wallet friendly by offering a 12 day advent for people that might want to partake. Um, I don't want anyone to have to miss out on the festive fun. So those will open up, spots will open, and they will be limited um, April 1st. So you can head over to the shop now. There is a listing open where you can read all the details in the description, um, as well as bookmark that listing for when it opens up on April 1st to be able to uh, get back to that quickly and 
check out. I will say um, it's probably best to create an account if you don't already have one on the site. That'll just, again, speed up the process, make it a little bit easier on you. Um, I have no idea how quickly those are going to sell, but I will say they've been going relatively quickly um, the last, last year especially. Um, but don't fret, I will have more rounds opening up um, throughout spring and summer. So if you do miss out, don't feel bad. Sign up for the email newsletter um, and I will always give my email subscribers um, a heads up on when to expect the next rounds to open. So I uh, just wanted to drop those little nuggets in. There was more I wanted to chat about, but I think I'm just going to call it. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful spring. Um, I hope we talk soon. I hope it's not another three weeks. Um, but we shall see. No promises. But until I see you guys, happy making, happy stitching, happy knitting, happy everything. Talk later. Bye.